Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to the Mainsail Weekly Update here this week. Uh, we have a lot of info around the jobs data, the very, very choppy markets, not only today, but throughout the last week. Um, and we'll address a question of the week around a state long-term care tax that may be on the horizon. Um, again, my name is Brandon Steele, as always, financial advisor here with Mainsail Financial Group, and very happy to be coming to you guys every Thursday at three, just to catch up on what's going on in the market, catch up on what's going on in the news uh, without all the fluff. Um, if you are like me, hopefully, especially if you're here in Washington State, you're enjoying this kind of glimpse of, of spring that we're starting to see. Hopefully, this is kind of the start. Things start getting warmer and we start to see a little bit more sunshine. Uh, yesterday was almost 60 here and it, it felt amazing. So hopefully you're enjoying that. Um, let's get right into it. Last week on Friday, we had quite a bit of, uh, of data come out. We had personal income, which was up about 10%. Uh, so that's a good sign, obviously. The jobs are not there, but it's good to see that, you know, that, that the income is rising. Uh, and then we had core inflation come out at 0.3%, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, and we're gonna talk more about some Fed comments here in a little bit that came out today. Uh, but as, as those who know us know, we have been following inflation for a while, and it's actually been here. We've all felt it, but the numbers would not necessarily show that because there are things in the measure of inflation that we're not really spending money on right now. Um, however, you know, you go buy some lumber and uh, let me know if there's, you know, if there's any inflation baked into where we're at right now. So this is the first time we've seen it uh, kind of start to creep up. I believe, if I remember right, last month it was about 02 percent. Uh, and I think it's something that's going to keep going. Um, again, I will touch a little bit on Fed Chair Powell's comments on inflation here in a minute, but I think we're seeing it. The numbers are showing it. That's not a high inflation rate, but, you know, again, it's interesting to see those numbers actually start to creep up a little bit. And I think we're seeing it in other areas that we might actually feel a little more day to day based on where we're spending these days. Uh, this week, just yesterday, Wednesday, we had ADP employment reports come out. So jobs data is like a big, big factor here in the, the markets this week. ADP employment report came out and we only added 117,000 jobs in February. That's it, 117,000 jobs were added. You know, a year into the pandemic, uh, still so many unemployed and that's all we're adding in a monthly basis for jobs. It is not good. Hopefully that changes here soon, you know, I feel like I've said that for so long and we just haven't seen much improvement. Um, obviously, it's going to taper off, right? We've had a huge run up in jobs uh, getting in people getting back to work, but now we're just kind of hitting this plateau and it's not really moving anywhere. You know, I think maybe as vaccines roll out, states start opening further and further. Hopefully that will change. Today, we had initial jobless claims. The number came out at 745,000. Not much of a surprise really there. Nothing you know, too far off the expectation. But the big news, two pieces of big news data was number one, uh, last week we talked about the 10-year treasury measure of interest rates getting close to one and a half percent. Big news this week, it hit one and a half percent, exceeded one and a half percent. And on top of that, uh, well, actually what drove that was some comments from the Fed. Uh, Fed Chair Powell came on basically, you know, kind of downplaying everything, saying that really there's no concern around, uh, you know, around the markets. There's no concern around some of the programs that they've rolled out. And I think the markets may have had a different opinion of that. So we saw the 10-year treasury really spike. Um, we saw it again, cross that one and a half percent rate. And then the rest of it just went from there. Uh, because the 10-year hit that level, we saw stock markets just get beaten up. We saw gold get beaten up. And when interest rates rise, bond prices fall. So really what we saw today was everything, I don't wanna say everything, but stocks, bonds, and gold all come down. Uh, very interesting. And I think this is one of the challenges in the world that we're in now is because of some of the Fed programs, You know, generally you get some diversification from stocks, bonds, and, and gold as well, maybe to some degree. But right now it's kind of a scenario where you know they are kind of moving together. And so, your portfolio may need a little different um, flavor <laughs> than the traditional view on that, especially for those a little closer to retirement. So just something to think about. Um, although we did see a little bit of pickup towards the end of the, the, the market close there, it, it was a crazy day. So uh, 
you know, we talked about this last week. We kind of expected that there may be a little bit of uh, of a drop. And again, maybe this is potentially a buying opportunity depending on what's going on in your world, but pay close attention. This may not necessarily be it either. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens in the coming days or week ahead of us here. Tomorrow, speaking of a bad day in the market, is non-farm payrolls. So pay attention to that. That, you know, we've talked about this before. The ADP employment number was, was not good. Uh, non-farm payrolls will also kind of share some, some jobs that were added. And hopefully that number comes out a little better than what we saw with the ADP number. Um, because it's, you know, we really need to see some people get back to work, I think, at this point. And then next week, we have CPI, another measure of inflation. So it'll be interesting to pay attention to that. And we also have the uh, federal budget coming out as well. Before we jump into the question of the week, we're really excited about this one. Uh, you know, we had asked everybody uh, over LinkedIn kind of what were some, some areas that they would like us to cover. So based on your guys' feedback, we got a lot of, uh, a lot of you know, interest in upcoming changes was kind of the priority. We'll also talk about some of the others around taxes and investing strategies as we move forward, but that was the, the top, uh, top question. So if you have any questions for us, you can email us directly, info at mainsailfg.com, or just let us know, go ahead and comment right below, and we'd be happy to address some of those questions next week. But as far as changes on the horizon, so the question of the week this week, what I want to bring up is the potential for uh, what's called a long Washington State Long-Term Care Trust Act. So believe it or not, uh, we talked a couple weeks ago about potential long-term gains tax. There is another bill that may add an additional income tax as well that would be designed to help pay for long-term care costs. Uh, you know, basically, I think it's about a 0.58% uh, tax that would be associated. So for instance, if you're earning 100,000, you know, 580 bucks a year, uh, if you do have personal long-term care insurance, you can actually opt out of that tax. Uh, and I believe self-employed can as well, but otherwise it's, it's a tax that is gonna be um, implemented if this, if this gets passed. And again, it will be designed purely for long-term care costs. Obviously this is something that's become a huge issue. It's become something that is extremely, extremely expensive. So I think the idea is to try and help out a little bit with that, you know, Medicaid doesn't necessarily always do the job. So this gives an opportunity to help a little bit with those benefits. H however, you know, it's something that everybody's gonna pay into whether they need it or not. Um, and, you know, the, the truth is that the benefits may not add up to be a whole lot. I think that the most recent I've heard was that they may be about uh, maximum payout of about 36,500 for long-term care type of expenses. So I don't wanna to get too far into the details. This is still being worked through, you know, again, like I've always said, it's I would not speculate on these potential changes, but it is important to know that this may be on the horizon. And I think what I wanna spend a little time talking about is what triggers long-term care. And really what that is, is something called the activities of daily living. So there are six of them, um, you know, think toileting, bathing, uh, you know, uh, mobility, those types of things. And essentially, if you're unable to perform three out of the six, you would be eligible for those benefits after also paying in for a certain period of time. So long-term care has become one of the bigger risks that are out there uh, for retirees, which I think is why we're seeing this. But, you know, it's important to address whether that's through the state program, whether that's through personal planning, more tax efficient strategies, whatever the case may be, you know, obviously it's it's getting to a point where it's a concern for the state too. And so, um, you know, I just wanted to kind of point out that this is something that may be on the, on the horizon and something to consider uh, and, and how that might impact you. So again, I would not suggest speculating around it, but I wanted to share what we're watching there. Adam is actually gonna be writing a blog on this here soon um, that will come out with a little more detail. So let us know if you have questions too, but wanted to share that thought based on some of the feedback we got for the question of the week. With that, we will wrap up. Uh, again, you can email us if you have any questions for us, inf info at mainsailfg.com. Otherwise, we will see you same place, 3 p.m. Uh, next Thursday. Thanks so much. Have a good day.